so today i have already stated that we'll be studying the various methods that are used for groundwater exploration so after attending this module the user means the students will be able to understand the popular methods for groundwater exploration because this groundwater is used for our daily needs whether that is for your drinking purpose or domestic or industrial use so there are various methods through which you will be exploring the underground water table so the methods are it can be surface geological method it can be geological methods it can be structural method it can be hydrogeological method it can be geophysical method and the most importantly it is the remote sensing method that you know that uh, how remote sensing and gis nowadays is used readily for the identification of or exploration of uh, groundwater uh, so you can see that uh, that in addition to the users will also be, you will be requiring some idea about the surface methods of the groundwater like well logging and trace drilling so now we will be studying in detail about the various methods so we will go one by one so we will start with the introduction as we already know that what is groundwater groundwater is a invisible natural resource that you cannot see it is available in different portions in various types of rocks whether that is a sedimentary rock or whether that is a metamorphic or a igneous rock at various depths like if you go for the groundwater exploration and their depth uh, sayed is in hyderabad rahul is in rajasthan dipanshu is in delhi uh, kritika is in assam so if you go the rock types are different the soil types are different the depth of water table is different so you have to identify those depth and how we can explore those reservoirs the underground reservoirs you cannot see because that is we are talking about those water that is stored beneath the earth that is known as ground water surface water we can see but the underground water we cannot see so for that there will be requiring various methods and techniques for exploration so in the historical past when there is no visible flow of water along the rivers people used to dig small pits so what in the ancient part it used to do when they didn't have a sufficient amount of water to be used for their daily need the people used to dig dug pits so that the aquifer water will come up through seepage from the adjoining rivers or from the underground water in the river alluvium and wait for it so that the water resides and get concentrated and they can use that ground water through seepage for their domestic and drinking purposes so this was the method that was used in our historical times similarly in the people who are staying in the mountainous region natural springs still the people are using natural spring for getting the source of water like uh, i have been very closely related with uh, Uh, himachal so here you won't be finding any uh, a purifier at home if you go more at the top near to the originations of the river there there is the no mean of installing a purifier why there is no mean because that doesn't have any anthropogenic influence means no industrial waste no uh, human uh, interference that is degrading the quality of water so you will be seeing that nowadays many of the com uh, company is coming up with a bottled water saying that that has been come directly from the himalayas there is a uh, water uh, what himalaya is the company i don't know here himalaya or bisleri that says that the water is directly uh, uh, used from the himalayan rivers and the cost of that bottle or uh, that 1 liter of bottle is near about 200 rupees so here there is no requirement of purification is required and the people are using i am whenever i come to himachal i never use a purifier then uh, directly we use the river water or the spring water for the use and that's all because of the purification or that's all because of the purity because they are very rich in minerals 
whether you talk of calcium whether you talk of iron magnesium and here you won't be finding any kind of uh, high metals uh, heavy metals like arsenic and fluoride in uh, ground water so you can directly inhale it you can directly uh, drink it and more than 60% of this people who are st uh, staying in the hilly terrain especially in all the northern parts of the northern eastern parts of the country that water is directly used for a drinking purpose so uh, now we have to uh, explore this water resource uh, and that task for giving of exploration is provided in india to the geologists so whenever you come to underground exploration whether that is a oil exploration whenever that is a petroleum exploration or whenever you talk about ground water exploration so whenever you talk about ground water there has to have some geologist who will be coming up with the mapping with the various types of their geological their structures lithology slope depth so that's why a geo scientist is required so whenever you go uh, you will see a vacancy for uh, a state ground water department or central uh, ground water board or central water commission or the various ministry of water resources always you will be finding that the uh, scientific positions of scientists b c d e are pertaining to geologist so that's why it's very important to understand this ground water so that you can properly once when you will be going into the field when you will be practically doing it you can easily understand the dynamics of this resources so ground water is a renewable resources so it can be renewed so ground water gets replenished after every rainfall so what happens it why it's renewable because each and every year gradually as the season progresses the water table grows down and again uh, you will have a, a rainfall and again it is get recharged and again it uh, comes up so that's why it is considered as a renewable resources but because of the climatic change if you are not concentrating on the alternative methods of ground water exploration or conservation again that this renewable resource can be converted into non renewable resources because of the or interference that we are doing to the environment to the atmosphere that's why it's very important to know the dynamics of the ground water and the level of water seen in an open well denotes the uppermost surface of the zone of saturation of the porous media and that is known as the water table so we have already uh discussed in detail in our previous slides about uh, what is zone of aeration what is zone of saturation what do you mean by water table so the topmost surface of the zone of saturation is designated as water table and we are going to extract this water table for our daily needs so after every recharge the water table rises obviously it will rise denoting the porous media has saturated more water so now this uh, recharge of the underground water table will depend on your porosity permeability whether the surface is pervious or impervious if it's impervious the maximum water will go as a run off so that's why you are saying that nowadays you'll see that pavements are more popular than cementing materials because that allow water to penetrate and go downwards get it recharged Uh, through sea page and finally that increases the underground water table so the instrument generally we used for extracting is the pumps in the villages you will see if you go to haryana punjab uh, rajasthan you will be seeing that the people are pumping out you have got a pump pumping and they you will be finding a continuous flow of water coming up so how does that water is coming up that water is coming in through aquifers because aquifers are the mediums who store water so continuous pumping of water beyond the recharge will make the water to dry and force to depend the well so nowadays uh, you are also seeing that uh, many times they are saying that the uh, pump has failed the pump has failed or the boring has failed so how this a uh, monsoon uh, period you won't be finding any failures but failures comes 
during pre monsoon during summer season that is because you are going on extracting the water uh, from the underground water resource and you are not recharging it so if you are not recharging it the underground is gradually declining so when it is declining you have got a fixed length of pipes you have got fixed length of a pump if it is beyond that capacity the pump cannot extract the water and that's why the pumping or the bore well fails that's why you have to have measures where you are putting a, a recharge to the underground water resource so that your pump doesn't fail so that's why it's very important to understand the mechanism of uh, this underground water so the search of ground water has increased because our population is increasing and due to non availability of sources and due to the declining water table it's very important to understand that dynamics of this ground water because this is different for different parts of the country like if you go to rajasthan if you go to himachal if you go to delhi the position is different the uh, soil is different the underground strata is different so ground water is not uniformly distributed throughout the india everywhere you will be finding some heterogeneity if there is a heterogeneity you have to understand the genesis ki what is the heterogeneous material is made of what are the different parameters that control those heterogeneous activity and finally you will be coming to a appropriate method where you can go for the groundwater exploration so the occurrence of the groundwater varies from formation to formation like somewhere you will be finding it a sedimentary formation somewhere igneous somewhere metamorphic somewhere it will be alluvium somewhere it will be piedmont somewhere a structural hill somewhere flood plains alluvial plain somewhere you will be finding loamy soil somewhere sandy soil somewhere you will be finding uh, structures lineament fractures cracks uh, faults so all this structural geological uh, soil features terrain uh, geomorphological features has to be seen has to be map has to be studied in detail so as to so you can understand a proper figure or a proper map of that terrain until unless you are not studying each and every features each and every component it will be very tough for you to identify each and every resources so the occurrence of ground water in sedimentary terrain will be more promising because there the porosity and permeability is high obviously when there is a porosity and permeability is high you will have a good recharge at the underground water server as the aquifer will hold a good volume of water but if you go into the mountainous terrain or if you go to the uh, hard rocky terrain so igneous and metamorphic rock there the seepage is limited in nature because of the toughness because of the compactness because of the uh, entire composition so you have to look for the structures that are responsible for uh storing water so you have to identify those features for ground water exploration so ground water prospect is very thought provoking scientific exercise because you will be seeing that if you go into the uh, scientific method of ground water exploration generally you will see that there is some pujari or some uh, uh, priest who comes and who identifies that in this portion of land you will be finding this water generally it is not been performed through some scientific exploration method but it is through our rituals or some private uh, or older methods that our ancestor used to follow and we are also following the same method but when it comes to the government mechanism or machinery there has to have a scientific method for ground water exploration in order to identify ki what is the total amount of volume of water that is existing in that aquifer whether we should go for exploration what is the quality of that ground water that we are going to explore and at what depth that ground water has exist and what is the total volume of that water so that has to be done using some scientific methods and for you will be requiring this different kinds of methods so the model what we are studying will be highlighting some general methods of ground water exploration so the first one is exploring ground water so ground water exploration is a typical task of a hydrogeologist or an engineer so uh, uh, if you are studying geology one day you have to be uh, some one can take his or 
or a specialization as a hydro somebody can take as a or somebody can take as a paleo so it all depends on your your orientation ki what a uh, specialization or what exports you want to be so whenever you are talking about uh, geology there are different applications where you can use this subject for the management for the protection for the conservation of the resources so identification of the location of the availability of water is a challenging task now if i say ki please provide me the area or the place where i can go for ground water exploration in your area by seeing the soil by seeing the surface you cannot predict ki what is the total volume whether you will be finding water at that place or uh, if you we, we bore it maybe after 40 or 500 feet or so 600 feet we don't get water so the entire money that is spent for those exploration activity who is going to pay it that's why a uh, scientific method is required because each exploration requires near about 10 to 15 lakh rupees so if uh, if you are not performing it through a scientific method those 50 or 30 lakh rupees will be wasted so nobody is going to waste at last you are responsible to answer someone ki where is that 30 lakh rupees you have wasted it so that's why the scientific methods is required so that you can have the precise the accurate measurement and your ground water site doesn't fail when you are suggesting someone ki this is the site where you can go and you will be getting the water that's why exploration of ground water requires the basic understanding of the position and the subsurface geological setting so ground water is an attempted through either direct or indirect method so that two different methods through which you can go for the ground water exploration either they are direct or indirect so test drilling is a direct approach to find out the uh, resource and this is an expensive affair i have already stated so every individual cannot go for the test drilling that uh, first you test it give what is the quality what is the sample what is the depth we in india we doesn't have that much amount of money we directly want our end products so during the last two centuries more and more techniques have been developed to explore the ground water they have declined into the surface and sub surface method so again you have got direct and indirect method again under the direct method you will be finding two method that is a surface method and sub surface method now again we'll go to the surface method give what is the surface method so when you talk about the surface method it's very easy to implement and operate so the minimum facilities that requires for exploration of this surface method is topo sheets that are available with us reports some field measurement data interpretation of the data is in the laboratories and this are the popular methods through which you will be going for the ground water exploration through surface methods technology the methods are the first one is astoric method second one is geomorphic method third one is geological and structural methods fourth one is soil and bio micro method fifth one is remote sensing and gis techniques as you already know ki you are very popular with this subject and finally the surface geophysical method so there are the different methods through which uh, you will be going for the ground water exploration you can uh, select any of the methods it is not that ki there is a fixed uh, uh, what i can say a uh, key to exploration you have to see what is the terrain like what is the condition and then according to that according to the project sanction money manpower you will be selecting the method for ground water exploration then the other one is subsurface method that will be doing into the detail that says the subsurface methods of the ground water exploration both test drilling and bore hole geophysical logging tech so if you are a hydrogeologist if you want to take this as a career you have to be very good for this two methods that is a surface method and sub surface method because in sub surface methods you have to go into the field you have to have a trench drilling you will be putting a bore hole the entire strata understanding has to be done and when compared with the surface method the sub surface methods are very expensive because here you will be requiring machinery you will be requiring drilling you will be requiring lot of manpower you have to go into the field the field requires money you will be requiring uh, money for travel for staying for fooding so that is the add on budget that he, uh, requires for this kinds of methods so these are done by the government level projects when the large scale investigations are 
carried out to ascertain the results of surface survey. So the subsurface methods are very accurate because if you are going into the field, you are testing it, you are drilling it, you are taking the sample site, you are doing on-field experiment, you are doing off-field experiment. So obviously the accuracy of the data will increase in subsurface methods as this help in direct observation of the features in the form of borehole lithologs as the core samples and also geophysical measurements of formation of properties. So now we'll start in detail about the various methods that we are using for groundwater exploration that is surface method. First one is historic method. So the historic methods are the ancient methods. These are the oldest water dividing methods practiced by ancient people for several centuries. This is also called as water dowsing. So what the people believe that the flow of water can induce some vital currents above the surface. When a wet plant twig is moved along such dune, it tends to rotate the twig as well. Wet twigs of the trees, husk remove coconuts, watches and other materials has been used as dining materials. The people handling the tweak has some role of induction and said it is not possible everybody to attempt the dividing of line. All these methods were practices in 17 still practices in India. You will be finding a place somewhere it comes with a coconut, somewhere it comes with a plate. So uh, you will see this is very popular in India that he will come, a priest will come, there is a bunch of uh, a tree and they are connected. So he will go, he will rotate around in your land and whenever his this tree will come up, he will say okay, this is the portion where you have to go for exploration. Somewhere he will be carrying a plate and he will put a coconut or above it and he will be roaming around in your a land and wherever you will be getting that uh, specific point, he'll be saying go to that exploration. We cannot justify, but still uh, that has got a good amount of accuracy. So we cannot say okay, it is illogical, it's unscientific. I can say it's unscientific, but still the accuracy is not so bad as you compare with any other technique. So there is no scientific exploration available with respect to this approach as already I have stated. And the probability of the success is mere coin tossing experiment. It's just like you're putting a coin and now it depends on your lucky whether you said head or tail and what it comes on the ground. So you cannot say and you cannot comment about the accuracy of the material using those methods. Again, the next one is Water ditching. Water ditching is a transitional method by people to detect bore well locations using a force stick to locate the water source known as water witching. So already stated, so I'll be going at a faster rate. Although this method is lacking any scientific justification for the method, water which is uh, diligently practice the art wherever the people can be persuaded for its potential value. Commonly, the methods consist of holding a force stick in both the hands, walking over the local area until the bend end is attracted downwards by surface water. It is amazing that the idea of supernatural powers, we do believe that the person who is uh, handling that uh, method, that stick has got some supernatural power and uh, he will be providing the accurate uh, method or the area where you will be going for the uh, exploration the next method is geomorphological methods so what do you mean by geomorphological method so whenever you are doing considering the geomorphological units into consideration and then you want to go for exploration that suggests geomorphological method so surface drainage is subdued replica of the topography as we have already studied the various types of uh, drainage patterns whether that is dendritic, radial, uh, trellis, centripetals, uh, there are various uh, other uh, systems available. So it is controlled by the basements of the rock. So whenever you go and you see a particular kind of drainage system, that is an indicative of the surface, subsurface surface feature. And mostly the groundwater coincides with that surface features that we have already studied. 
so the streams and the water courses may be controlled by some underlying structures junction of streams at the down slopes are the promising zones of ground water so you have to identify those spots those areas where you can get good amount of recharge so that can be the down slopes landforms originate due to several uh, geological features that have the capacity city of highest permeability so the riven bone alluvial traces flood plains stratified water valley fields and deposited in abundant channels uh, means they were ancient paleo channels where the water used to flow then glacier out uh, wash more in deposits there are the various kinds of geological and geomorphological landforms associated with the uh, fluvial river system or glacial river system or aeolian river system or coastal river system so you have to identify those different kinds of landforms which are suitable or which has the capacity of holding the water if uh, you can identify those landforms on the earth you can say that these are the spots where you can go and get a good amount of uh, ground water because you cannot see it so you have to identify the alternative or the indicators who are indicative of a good uh, signature of ground water so alluvial pans fans which partly drifted fields valley sand dunes moist depressions and marshy environments are the good locality where you can go for ground water exploration getting it what i'm stating getting it yes anybody getting it so next is a study of the landform so what i have already stated in the earlier semester and the classes we have already studied the various kinds of landforms that are indicative of permeable strata so the location of modern alluvial traces flood plains stratified valley fields glacier outbook plains glacier lakes kames more and complexes alluvial fans beach ridges are the good locations for a ground water occurrence so partially drifted uh, field valleys marked by change of elongated closed depressions largely marked bedrocks valleys cutting across modern valleys that are indicated by local non sloping of wheel shale strata in the valley side sand dunes uh, assumed to overlay sandy glacial low uh, fluvial sediments nearby locations of lakes and streams are also good indicator of groundwater prospecting so what you have to do you have to go and you have to identify the different landforms the suitable landforms where you can get good amount of groundwater next come is topography and drainage so what does topography means relief and drainage we have already known that what are the different kinds of drainage so physiography methods analyze the surface topography and the drainages the location of the confluence and the junctions of uh, surface streams at the downstream points of small wet watersheds we also know now what is watersheds are good location for the groundwater confluence so hydrological gradient of the groundwater system will always follow the topographic gradient and the slope it is obviously uh, that uh, it is indicative slope is directly indicative of runoff if you have got a slope there will be high runoff if you have got a uh, low or flat like terrain you will get uh, less runoff so that uh, means you can have a more per percolation permeability time time is important because if you have got more time that means it will have more recharge it will have more seepage if you have got less time only the sub only the surface uh, top strata will be saturated with water next it will be going as a runoff so such locations are also suitable for uh, collection and storing of the recharge then you have got drainage density of stream network already i have stated several times we have study the drainage morphometric analysis where we have studied about the drainage density is the ratio between the total length of all stream and the area of the watershed or the river stream the resultant drainage dens uh, density is used to indicate the potentiality of the groundwater if the drainage density is low the groundwater potentiality will be more as already i have stated if uh, the density is low means the time is more and time is more means the seepage is more 
so if it is a high due to more stream the run off will be more so already we have said if more drainage density means lesser of time high the slope more run off so that is the indicative of topographical and drainage method the third method is geological method so geological method already you have studied the various kinds of rock types their characteristics their composition so we'll be using those uh, physical chemical uh, uh, properties for uh, uh, exploration of this groundwater so a geological investigation begins with the collection analysis hydrogeological interpretation of existing topographical maps aerial maps geological maps lithologs and other pertinent records so this should be supplemented uh, when possible by geological field reconnaissance by evaluation of available hydrological data on stream flow springs well yields groundwater recharge discharge levels water quality because whenever you are going for groundwater you have to see each and every component because if you miss something you are going to your method is going to fit so in some places you have to go for the drainages may be fully controlled by the presence of minor and major structures like zones faults lineaments so such zones are good potential zones for groundwater exploration so if you are being given the task for uh, exploration of groundwater where should you explore in a hard rock terrain so you have to identify this features like joints fracture and lineaments and if you have identified if you have uh, seen ki where is it is now you can go for exploration next is structural methods already we have stated that the contact points between the permeable water bearing strata overlaying the relatively impermeable strata usually along the sides of the valley that cross across the interface between the different strata are the suitable locations for groundwater springs occurring or or near the base of a hillside valley slopes or local scarps are indicative of the groundwater occurrence over the hilly terrain dikes are good barriers for arresting the flow of groundwater the location of dikes analyzing their deep and strike you have already know what is deep and your strikes help in selecting the groundwater potential zones in the upstream side so that is a good method for detection then you have got well inventory so well inventory is a method of analyzing the well cutting and the intersurface of open dug wells to know about the surface geology structure seepage fluctuation of water levels rates of recovery from pumpings and the geo environmental settings of the wells in the region so this method helps you to analyze the data collected from more number of wells of a region and come to a conclusion about the regional groundwater personalities or potentialities so the groundwater flow paths could be easily identified through well inventory promising zones can be identified for further investigation through this methods next is soil and microbiological methods today we will be completing only till surface method because if you continue more you will be just you cannot adopt all the things next is soil and microbiological methods where the different geo botanical indicators are valuable tools where we will be identifying the different plants the different hops the different soil types which are indicative of good uh, uh, capacity of holding ground water and we'll be doing the anomalous growth of vegetation alignment of big trees on a straight line growth of termite mounds location of age old deep rooted heritage tree can indicate the occurrence of the ground water at shallow depth because if you have got greenery means that is indicative of good amount of water that is available in that area presence of phyllophytes plants with a high tolerance for soluble salts high efflorescences of salt at ground surface indicates the presence of shallow or brackish or saline ground water so many time you can indicate about the different plants can indicate about the quality of the water not only the quantity because in india we always look for the quantity after few years of 20 or 50 years will talk about the quality so 
but the foreigners they talk about quality that's why they always drink this bisleri water they don't uh, drink the hand pumps or the direct uh, spring water that i was stating so extrophytes the well known desert plants subst subsisting on minimal water suggest a considerable depth to water demand so if we can identify this plant this plant is indicative of water bearing structure so if i know i am into the field i identify this plant is there i can say ki, yeah this area is possibility that there is a good amount of uh, uh, water available in that area so whenever you have to be into the field you have to see from each and every aspect that time you have to be a botanist that time you have to be a soil scientist that time you have to be a hydrologist that time you have to be a geologist that time you have to be a remote sensing entrepreneur because nowadays uh, the employability depends on the amount of expertise you have the amount of experience the amount of confidence you have the amount of thinking that you have all uh, is very important for the success of a model you see whenever you are uh, using any machinery or any instrument that has to be operated by a human being so providing a data providing a result uh, doesn't have any value until unless you are not coming with the inferences other you are not coming with the results so all this supplementary tool will help us to identifying the ground water zones then you have got moist depressions and seepages that we already know that they are the good indicative of marshy environment or seepages strings of alkali flats playas along the interactive drainage system soil precipitate soil frost are the localized anomalies looking burn out patches in the soil and vegetation associated with the salt migration and accumulations are good indicators for groundwater availability again we are looking for indicators we have to identify the indicator just like if you are taking a turn uh, during a uh, while driving you have to provide an indicator that whether you are uh, going left or right in the same way this indicators what we are studying right now are indicators for the groundwater availability the groundwater quantity the groundwater quality so depression springs where the land surface locally cuts the water table or the upper surface of the zone of saturation contact springs containing permeable water bearing strata overlying relatively impervious strata usually along the sides of the value that cut across the interface between the different strata are the good locations for Uh, your underground water table and finally the presence of artesian springs occurring on the undulating upland till plains artesian springs occurring on or near the base of the hill sides valley slopes and local scarps are good indicator of groundwater recharge so uh, today it was how we'll be going for groundwater exploration using direct indirect method why it's important what are the different kinds of methods their uh, introduction and then we have done in detail about the various types of surface methods that comprises of soil method then geomorphological method geological method remote sensing method uh, geobotanical method so uh, you have can see that uh, you can select any of the method according to your requirement according to the zeal the more you take the parameters the more you take the indicators for the ground water exploration the more will be the accuracy of your result and uh, the chances will be very high and with this i'll be ending my today's presentation on ground water exploration methods tomorrow we'll be doing the subsurface methods that are used for ground water exploration and thereafter now we'll have a 3 to 4 minutes of question answer round and thereafter i'll be ending my today's class